Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, I thought I would cover Copper Damascus and how to do that. But a lot of people ask me lots of questions about Copper Damascus, uh, and I figured I would do a deep dive in this session, how to make it, different as aspects of it, things to look out for. So let's go down to the table and take a look. All right, so first off, let's define what we're talking about when we say copper Damascus. Um, and for all you that are going to go off on a rant about what's Damascus and what's not Damascus, uh, I refer to this as anything with copper in it that's layered. I understand, I know what Damascus, original Damascus is, and the difference between woots. Let's not get into that debate. Um, really what we're doing is a layered construction. And typically this is what in Japanese terms would be kind of like a gomai, which is, if we look at layers, it would be five layers. Go meaning five, and you're going to put the copper between these layers. That's the basic construction, which is why some people call this a kumai. Ku is the, uh, or cu is the um, term for copper in the periodic table, so instead of gomai, it was termed kumai. So that's where that came from. So if you hear kumai, that's what uh, also people mean. I've also done this with double strips of copper in, in the past, which would be seven layers. So um, really we're talking about a layered construction, uh, usually a core steel with copper and an outer cladding. That outer cladding or, or the core could be Damascus steel in itself, uh, like this one. This the sword here. This is Damascus, and the outer um, cladding is 1095. So people ask me all the time, does this affect the strength of the blade? Um, so the simple answer is yes, it does a little bit. Um, what it does, it's just a really thin sheet over a core. So as long as your core steel is thick enough and here you can see this the core steel on this one is over an eighth inch thick um, then you're fine uh, obviously if your core gets too thin and you've got copper over it obviously you're weakening your blade a little bit uh, so as long as you keep your core pretty thick you're fine this really isn't and there's a misnomer here that you're forge welding the layers together you're really not this is more like brazing and if you look up copper brazing, the copper brazing bond from Google is in excess of 70,000 PSI in tensile strength. Meaning, if you were to snap this blade, you try to snap this blade, it's not going to snap at this point. Um, you're really going to destroy this blade before you are able to shear these, these layers apart. So it's quite strong. I've seen it now. It's becoming very popular. I've seen hundreds of knives in this kind of construction. So it's pretty solid. Um, and I've also had people, well, what happens if you sharpen it up to the copper? That's impossible, folks, because think about it. If this is your knife, as you sharpen the blade, uh, it's going to be a bevel and the copper, of course, is going to move up as you sharpen it. So you can never reach the copper. So those are some misconceptions. So let's talk about construction and actually doing it. So like I said before, you can have Damascus as the core or whatever it is. For this particular one, I'm going to be using a 15N20 cladding and a 1095 core. And then, of course, my copper. So I use... 20 thousandth thick, so 0 0.020 thickness copper. Uh, that's pretty thin, and the reason is that as you draw something out, you really want that line to be kind of thin, and this is what's used here. And you can see on the bevel, I think this is the perfect amount of copper. If you use copper that's too thick, you get a big thick band in the center, and I don't think that looks as nice, so I like a very thin piece of copper. Uh, this is enough, so these are six inch pieces, uh, and they're oh, eighth. I think the 15 and 20 is a little less than an eighth. But when you stack this up, you'll see that, you know, you're a little more than three eighths. This will make, you know, when you draw this out, you'll get about a 10 inch billet, something like that. So you'll get another four inches out of this. So this is going to be one of my thresher 
one of these guys, one of my thresher hunting knives. And I'm actually teaching some folks uh, copper Damascus here, so this is enough for three billets. So we're gonna be drawing this out, making sure that the core stays in the center. So just a bit about the copper that I use. I buy this in six, it's six inches wide. And uh, I think, I think it was like 10 feet or 12 feet. So I buy it in a big roll. Uh, and I like it because most of my billets are six inches wide. So I can just cut off um, sheets here. And that's why I just, I just cut the side of the box so I can kind of pull it out and just keep cutting it off. And if I need a really long piece, then I'll cut it lengthwise like what I did here. Uh, it's much cheaper to buy this way than to buy it in sheets from, you know, one of the knife making supply stores. Uh, I'll put a link down here uh, to where I got this. It's an Amazon uh, link. And it also comes with some copper nails, uh, which you can use as pins if you want. So that's kind of nice and a drill bit. So really cheap. I think I paid 80 bucks for this and uh, just a sheet this big at some of the supply stores is like 15 so much better or more than that almost 20 so much better value here uh, and also to cut this I will just use shears so I'll just use metal I'll mark it with a pen and I'll just cut this with some uh, metal shears uh, makes it much easier I tried cutting this with a bandsaw before it just makes a mess um, just because this is so thin the bandsaw just kind of the edge is really nasty after the bandsaw, so you're much easier and you get a much nicer um, finish um, using shears. That um, So copper melts around, I think, 1984 degrees, I think, if I'm doing that from memory. Uh, that's pretty easy to achieve in a forge. Uh, and even if you get close to that, that means your copper is liquefying. So the biggest piece is you need to keep this well below forge welding temperatures, steel forge welding temperatures, which is around the 2200 range. So you're nowhere near forge welding temps. You're, you're keeping your billet, really, you want to keep it under about 1800 degrees. And that's like a red color. Keep it under a red color or below just enough to move the steel. That will be enough to braise it together and the copper is kind of your glue. What you cannot do, and people get confused about this sometimes, is if you were to do this accidentally, oh, I want a thicker core. I'll just put two of these in the center, okay? You cannot do that because you are not reaching forge welding temperatures for steel. If you were to reach forge welding temperatures from steel, all your copper would be gone because it would be melted out. So you cannot put any steel to steel in your construction. Okay, and I, I've actually made that mistake, or almost made that mistake once, where I wanted to double up the core until I caught myself and didn't do it. Hey folks, are you enjoying the channel, but looking for a way to support it? Well, here's how. Join my Patreon. Here's all the perks that you're going to get. There's a link down in the description. I'd love for you to support the channel. So next thing is, even though you're going to keep this below 1800 degrees, just to give yourself some insurance, you're going to want to weld all of the seams, okay? And people say, oh, well, welding, that contaminates. So don't worry about it. You're going to be grinding this all off anyway. So we're going to weld all of the seams here to keep the copper completely encased. And in fact, guys, this is a recommendation for all Sanmai builds you're always better off just to weld all of the outside and keep a completely oxygen-free center. I always do that for all of my layered sand mine constructions. It's just insurance and it works well. So I'm gonna take this over to the, uh, the MIG welder. Um, uh, I've already cleaned all the surfaces and we are going to weld this up. Here's the billet after welding. You can see I've welded the edges 
all the way around and I like to put a little piece on it because I hold it with tongs. So yeah, as long as it's all sealed up, that gives you some insurance so that the copper won't come out. So we're going to put this in the forge and heat it up. Keep an eye on it. Don't let it get too hot, especially if you have a hot spot in your forge. Um, so we're going to heat it up to a red color. And then we're going to first just use the flat dies and just apply some pressure as if you were um, forge welding. And just put some constant pressure on the whole thing after we get it up to around 1800 degrees. So flat dies with pressure, a couple of heats, and then we'll start to draw it out. Uh, I'm actually going to show you guys on a separate billet because I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be training some folks. So I just kind of welded this up. Um, now, I'm going to show you from some work I did in a previous video, and I'll talk about it as we go through that. I'm going to be forging this with my press, but you can easily do this with a hand hammer. Many have done it. Now it's time to set the welds with some pressure, and then we're going to draw out this billet until it's big enough we can form our knife out of. Like I said, I like to do at least two or three heats with the flat dies before I start drawing it out. I'm using my less aggressive rounding dies here just to draw it out without putting a ton of valleys in it. Many people ask me how I get such a cool pattern in the copper. This is how, these aggressive rounding dies. Every time you press down, that's going to create one of those little valleys. And now I'm just flattening it out, drawing it out, and removing those valleys until I get to my desired thickness. Another thing to remember, you don't want to flatten the edges or push the edges down. That will totally screw up your core. So the edges are going to get a little gnarly, but that's fine. Thanks for joining me on this video, folks, of a how-to on Copper Damascus. I hope you found it useful. If you got any questions, put them down in the comments. There's also links to uh, the copper and some other things that I use also down in the comments, so check those out. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you on the next one.